Hello everyone. Today we're going to be going over gear ratios and transmission ratios. I made a transmission ratio rear end calculator for you to use. There will be a link for that in the description below for you to access. Before we go over the calculator, let's explain how gear ratios and transmission ratios work. The gear ratio is a gear assembly in the rear end whose purpose is to distribute torque to the rear wheels for traction. In NASCAR Heat 4 we have the ability to change these gears allowing us to run different ratios for different size tracks. This adjustment can be accessed by clicking the gear setting box in the garage screen. The ratio expresses the number of turns required by the pinion, which is attached to the output shaft of the transmission, to turn the drive axle one revolution. An example of 4.33 means that the pinion must turn 4.33 times in order to turn the axle one revolution. A higher number means a lower or shorter gear. Short gearing gives quicker acceleration, but because the engine must turn faster, fuel mileage and top speed are lower. Tall gears give smoother acceleration and higher top speed at the expense of quick acceleration. The rear end ratio you will need is different for every track you compete at and is the most common gear change in a real race car. When you change the rear end ratio, you change the final drive ratios together proportionally. On short tracks, you will want to choose a higher rear end ratio because quicker acceleration will be a must at tracks where speeds are not as high. At super speedways, you will want a smaller ratio for top speed since quick acceleration is not necessary on a track where you'll full, be at full throttle most of the time. The most important factor when considering what ratio to use is that you do not choose a ratio that is too high. Too high a ratio will, will result in running higher RPMs. If by the time you reach the end of the straightaway and you're running higher than 9,000 RPMs, you will risk having your rev limiter kick in. This will result in a loss of torque and thus a loss of speed. The rev limiter is used to prevent us from running the engine too high, which could result in a blown engine. You must watch your tack when changing gear ratios. If you're running too high in RPM, you will also notice it through the sound of your engine as a missing sound. As you adjust other chassis components, you will most likely find yourself having to change the differential ratio or the rear end ratio. As you find more speed through the corners, you will eventually find yourself on the throttle quicker. Since you're on the throttle sooner, you'll be running at a higher RPM towards the end of the straightaway. This is likely going to force you to make a rear end ratio change. The transmission is designed to change the high rotational speed and low torque, the turning force, of the engine's crankshaft into the higher torque rotations needed to turn the wheels over a range of speeds. Transmission ratios vary through the four gears selected during shifting and are adjustable in varying increments. For each individual gear, this adjustment can be changed in the settings of the garage box, or the settings box in the garage. Like the differential and transmission ratios, the final drive ratios are read in the same manner. A higher number means a lower gear. A short gear gives quicker acceleration, but because the engine must turn faster, fuel mileage and top speed are lower. Tall gears give smoother acceleration and higher top speed at the expense of quick acceleration. So we can look at the calculator for an example. First gear with 2.15 ratio and a rear end ratio of a 4.33 means our final drive is 10.8225, which is a really short gear. It's going to hit the RPM rev limiter really quick. You're not going to go very fast, but you're going to accelerate really, really quickly. Now the fourth gear, which is a 1 ratio to a 4.33 rear end ratio, results in a final drive of a 4.33, which will result in higher top speeds, but will not accelerate as quickly as the previous or the preceding gears. Now transmission ratios are very rarely changed in real race cars unless you're running at a track that requires a lot of shifting, such as a road course. Most of your ratio changes will be made at the rear end. And the most important factor in selecting proper transmission ratios is to make sure you're not geared too high, causing excessive wheel spin. You must also be sure you have a good split between ratios through all four gears. You want to maintain as high RPM as possible when shifting through the gears. Too large a split between gears will cause slow acceleration and a loss of time when shifting is required, most notably on a road course or while on starts, restarts, and exiting the pits. You want to set your gears to shift. So when you shift from first gear to second gear, you'll want second gear to land between six and 7,000 7, RPMs for maximum acceleration, so on and so forth. So what we do here is we enter our transmission ratios into the yellow boxes, and it will compute our final drive ratio for first through fourth gear in the green box. Your lower transmission ratios equal more RPM and less torque. A higher transmission ratio equals more RPM and more torque. 
Higher rear end ratio numbers equals lower geared, and that equals less speed and higher RPMs. Lower rear end ratio numbers equals higher geared, and that equals more speed and less RPMs. Final drive ratios follow the same rules as the rear end ratio. Well, there you have it. That is your explanation on transmissions and rear end ratios. I hope this helps you folks. Uh, be sure to give us a like if you like, and hit the subscribe button for future content.